Okay, this won't be a particularly long video, but I just want to just expand on this idea of building a complex sort of workflow. So I'm just going to come back to Salminer real quick here and drop some files in. These are about 67 files, I think, that again were made for this mastering class. But I just want to show you this sort of what you can do with sort of compound workflow. So I have just these file names. There's nothing else in here. Um, I don't really have a plan of what to do. I'm just going to try to sort of experiment a little bit. But let's say we want to uh, first basically want to split this apart. So let's sort of look at the way that we could break apart a file name manually if we wanted to. Again, there's a much better way to do this we're going to look at later, but just to show you that it is possible. So let's come down here into the uh, workflow that's called um, separate items. Okay. So we only have the file name to work with, so we're going to work on the file name. So, and we have some underscores which break the file name into these different parts. This is part of the UCS file name structure. So, but let's say we're going to break the file name into an array, into an array, sorry, using the underscore. And now let's start to see what we could do with it. So let's take the first item, which we know is the cat ID. So basically let's go ahead and paste that into cat ID. And let's take the second item. I'm going to just right click on this and duplicate. And let's say, let's take the second item. And this is going to become the effects name. Right? That's what we're calling this second chunk. Now, in my file name, you'll see I don't have any spaces in any of these. So we saw earlier this one called auto split. So let's add that to our little sequence and we'll say auto split the effects name to the effects name. That should have the effect of breaking this apart on every sort of capitalization. Now, let's come back here and let's duplicate this again, but let's drag it down now below. Let's kind of put this down here and say, take our third one and put that into designer. But we don't want to use just the initials, so now let's say we want to take and do a find and replace within the designer field. And let's just find TN, which is going to be the only thing that's there, and replace with my name. And then lastly, let's come back here again. Let's duplicate this one more time. And let's drag this one down to the bottom. We'll take the very last one, the fourth one, and let this put this into show. So basically, I'm manually breaking apart a file name. And the reason this will work is, of course, because our file names are very rigid, and we know that in every fourth position is this source ID, and every third position is the creator ID. This is, again, one of the powerful things about a file name that has sort of this rigid structure. It may not seem, you know, perfect to you, but it allows us to do things that would be pretty difficult if I threw a bunch of vendor files in here from different vendors. Every one of these pieces of information, even if it was in the file name, is likely to be in a different place. So. Um, I haven't troubleshot this. Let's just run it and see what happens. But basically when I run it, you see it does exactly what we told it to do. Take the cat ID, which I have to show here. Sorry, it's not actually showing at the moment. So let me show this and bring it back over here. Put this on the far left. So it went through, it stripped out the cat ID, placed it over here into cat ID. It went ahead, took the second part, which is going to become the effects name, which we sort of did here by hand. And it split out on capitalizations. So there you go, quite nice. And it basically took the TN and pasted it here, then went ahead and after it pasted it, because of working in order here, did a find and replace. And then it took the fourth item and it put it into show. So I've just manually more or less broken this out. Now, we looked at this thing earlier called run process script. Um, this is one place where I could do this. There is actually a script that basically says auto expand cat ID. And this one doesn't rely on any graphical elements, so I could run this at the end of it. So I'm going to actually undo all that. Now when I run it, it gets to the very end, and it's going to auto-expand the cat ID. Let me move this actually all the way to the left. It will auto-expand cat ID actually into category and subcategory. My check mark column. So now when I run this again, you'll see that in addition to stripping out the cat ID, it goes ahead and breaks the cat ID out based on this category table and goes ahead and fills in category and subcategory as well. Uh, but you see the effect is that I'm running this script from within uh, the workflow. Let me undo that for a second and just show you that basically, if I bypass that, run all of these again, if I come manually by hand and right click, process metadata script, auto expand cat ID, that I can run it manually in this fashion, but I can just as easily run it as part of the workflow. And again, this script is basically looking up the lookup table behind the scenes, finding this cat ID, and filling in these other fields accordingly. So pretty quickly, I just built a complex workflow here that can basically break apart my UCS file name into most of the things. Now, 
we're going to see again later Justin's sort of solution to this, which is much more elegant and gives you some choices about where to put things. But it is possible to do everything that he's doing there in a sort of a complex workflow here. Just to show you, this is basically a uh, proof of concept, very elaborate script that I did to try to figure out how to do this. And this is a much more complicated one. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of it, but basically I just want you to show this is basically a complex workflow for stripping out all the information. And it allows you to do certain things. So just if I give you a rough idea of what it's doing, it takes the file name, breaks it into an array, and it stores the five variables into temporary one through five. So it breaks it apart into up to five pieces because the file name can have up to five pieces in our sort of system. And then it starts to do things with them. So basically, again, it takes the first one and puts it into cat ID. This one can actually strip out the user category as well if it's there. Um, so if I run this, we select all and run it, it's basically going to do very similar to what we just did in the previous one, but this one has even more options. So if I switch to the view that shows user category, you'll see that this complex workflow actually did have the ability to sort of strip that out. Otherwise, it's doing very much similar to what we did before. And then this one gives you some options similar to what Justin's sort of script does. When you get to the basically temporary four, and temporary three, which are the creator ID and the source ID, you can have it pasted either into the designer or the manufacturer simply by bypassing one and using the other. Again, this complex workflow doesn't make any sense anymore because there's a much more elegant way to do this. But before Justin wrote that, I sort of built this out as a proof of concept just to show sort of what you can do. And it took me only about 15, 20 minutes of sort of a little bit of trial and error to figure out exactly what I wanted to do. So. I just want to show you how complicated these can be. There's no limit, I don't think, to the number of steps you can do. Um, I often, again, sort of do it on a single file to sort of verify that it's doing what I want it to do. So I'll just kind of pick one and run it and go, OK, that's good. It's looking good. This is the right place. This is where I want. So you know, again, here I've got these bypassable scripts. So um, I have it right now putting uh, the name TN into designer. Let me just undo that and show you that basically by just changing some bypasses, I could have put this into manufacturer instead, which I'm not actually showing. But if I showed manufacturer, you see that it put the TN there instead. So these are some of the things you can do by using bypass is, you know, I create a little block that kind of gives me a choice, either put it into designer or in manufacturer. Or, you know, I could easily put it into both, to be perfectly honest with you, right? And that's perfectly valid as well. But in this case, I'd probably only want to use one or the other. So being able to bypass stuff is pretty cool. Let me just show you a couple of good shortcuts. I already showed you that you can right click on something and say duplicate. Now, one other thing you can do is, um, again, anything that's in bypass simply is skipped over in the process of running this script. So let's say I wanted to basically have the equivalent of soloing one of these steps, right? I don't want to have to come in here and bypass every other single one that I don't want. I don't necessarily want to clear it because maybe I want all these steps available. So you have a couple options. If you right click, I can say solo this action, which basically bypasses everything else. It doesn't actually solo this one, but it bypasses everything else. So effectively, it solos that one. I can also unbypass all to basically light everything else back up. So those are the two options you have. If you wanted to bypass five of these things, you'd have to do them kind of by hand. But again, if you wanted to quickly clear them, unbypass all will basically do that. Again, duplicate's very useful for just taking one step, duplicating it again, and maybe making a little change to it, something like that. So I want to show you a little example of a couple of other complex workflows. The one that I just showed you was to basically extract information out of a file name. Well, I built a really long one that can actually build a file name out of the various metadata fields. Um, again, not useful now because there's a much better way to do this and much more elegant. Um, but this, again, was a proof of concept that I just wanted to sort of do to show myself that it was going to be possible to sort of build the UCS file names with all these other metadata fields. And it completely worked. One other one that might be useful is commonly used fields. And all this does is basically... Uh, allow you to sort of take a bunch of files, assign it to a category, and then just enter a bunch of metadata into it. It's similar to the old admin window, which was how you'd get with Apple I. So if I select a bunch of files and hit Command I, then I could come here and I could basically just type in a bunch of stuff for any of these fields, right? It's just a way to bulk set a bunch of things. Well, this functionality, this admin window, doesn't work in Catalina, uh, and it won't work in anything past there. It's simply going to break forever. So Here's just a simple workflow I made and just saved it, which just the most common things that I might want to assign. The effects name, description, designer, manufacturer. I could just literally type all these things in. Um, I could then save that workflow to remember them. So, you know, set designer to Tim Nielsen always. Set 
uh, library to Tim Nielsen effects. And now if I save this basically, then clear it, come back later, right? It will remember that. So I could simply call this up for my most common used fields. I could even store different variants of this for different shows, different keywords, uh, things like that. So this is super easy to build. I will just clear it and just show you all it really is, is just basically set field, set category to, just go ahead and duplicate, set whatever the next one you want, duplicate, set library, set show. That's all it is, but it's useful to have it pre-built as a sort of complex workflow so that I could just really easily just call it up and here we go. And if I wanted to store those, I could save it as, or I can just come down here and type and apply this to a whole bunch of fields. So, you know, if I select it all, basically hit ran, it'll go through and set all those fields to exactly what I've sort of set. And because I'm using the assigned cats at the beginning, it's also assigning the category subcategory to all of those. So one other one that I've built, which is pretty useful for me when I'm doing sort of demos is um, clear foreigns, which basically removes all of the text from all of these little foreign fields. Well, when I'm doing these demos, it sort of builds out all these foreign categories, subcategories, category fulls. And this is just a really complex workflow that just because I got sick and tired of sort of going in by hand and removing them all. So this just literally will clear all of those things. So if I switched to a view that sort of showed all these foreign views, and for example, if I ran the, um, if I assigned them to say a certain category, well, you'll see that part of what uh, the CAD ID script does is actually fills in all the foreigns. And it became kind of tedious to sort of go in there and clear them all. So I built this so that I can simply come in here and say, clear all the foreign categories. And this will simply go through and basically zero out all of those fields. So I just want to show uh, two little last, uh, very simple workflows that we have built, which are available up on the website that may be useful. And um, the first one is this one that just says remove cat ID from file name. Uh, but before I run that, I want to basically run the script, which is going to break the category ID out because I want to be able to have it available to put it back later. So I'm going to just run this. Actually, I'm going to run it on everything, on all files. I have it hotkeyed, but it's basically the equivalent of right-clicking and saying run metadata script auto expand cat ID. So again, all it does is takes the cat ID at the beginning of the file name and fills in the category, subcategory, category full. Now, let's say I've done that and one of the complaints which we sort of trying to address in another video on file names is some people don't want the category ID. Well, this is a very simple find and replace, but it uses regex. Again, a little over my head, but somebody wrote this to basically say, look for basically every character up to the first underscore, which according to our file name structure is the cat ID. So if I run it this way, basically all it will do is strip out the cat ID from the beginning of the file name, right? So there's that. This is available up on the website. There's also one here that says basically uh, prepend cat ID to file name. So in this case, we have the cat ID here. And let's say that you're a vendor and you want to deliver a UCS compliant file name. We sort of mentioned over in the vendor requirements that all that actually entails is appending, sorry, prepending the category ID to the beginning of the file name. So this is just a two part workflow. It's incredibly simple but this will accomplish that. Now, this step here is necessary because prepending the cat ID will literally take this and paste it right at the beginning of the file name. But the rule is that the cat ID has to be followed by an underscore. So we actually sort of do this in reverse. Basically, we're gonna use this thing called field build, which we looked at, say, and build the file name based on the file name, but with an underscore in front of it. So underscore, then what's currently in file name gets built. This colon one, you'll see sometimes come up by default. It's not necessary, but it has to do with prioritizing um, the, I believe, the file name limit. So if it's going to run out of space in this 255 characters, which fields are basically prioritized first? So if file name is basically prioritized with a colon one, then it says basically truncate that one absolutely last. That's the most important of the fields. I don't want that one to get truncated if you have to truncate something. But again, I don't actually need that in there. So in this case, take rebuild the file name by just taking it, pasting it back into itself with an underscore before it. Then using the copy field, prepend the cat ID to the beginning of the file name. So if I run this on all of these, this will basically just re-put the category ID at the beginning of these file names, right? So it undoes exactly what we just did before. So if I had manually assigned these, so I could do that. So 
if I come here and I say category, put these all under chemicals acid, you'll see that the cat ID is going to change for all of these. And if I ran this this point, it's going to just prepend it again. It won't actually remove this one. So it's going to be pretty messy, but you can just see that it just does whatever's in the category ID. It just prepends it to the beginning. But again, as a vendor, if you took the time to go through your library and just assign these things to the proper category IDs, you know, you come here and you want to listen, these ones are this. And um, when you get to that point, you could simply select all your files, run this, and now basically you have a UCS compliant file name. That's all it takes, right? This at the beginning of the file name is all we're sort of demanding if you want to sort of advertise your library as UCS compliant. So this is a very simple workflow. It would take, you know, 10 seconds to build, but it just shows you again what you can do to sort of manipulate data and build file names and all these kind of things. And so I think that's all we need to talk about in sort of workflows for a second. Now we're going to switch over and actually start taking three different libraries, uh, one of mine, one of from the recordist and one from Soundmorph, and use all of these tools to actually sort of fairly quickly and fairly painlessly re-sculpt all the metadata, including the file names, into the UCS standard, if that was what somebody wanted to do. So let's first look at one of my libraries, a library called Ether, which is a library of radio sound effects, which I actually haven't converted into the UCS standard yet, and I needed to. So let's just pull that up and see what we can do.